Everybody and welcome to another exciting, anger-inducing episode of Andrew Rants, the video series where I stand upon my metaphorical soapbox pedestal of the world, and I bitch complain about stuff that annoys me, pisses me off, and just plain makes me wonder what in the holiest of hell they were thinking. Oh boy, and today, what has my piss a boiling? What's got my rage a rolling? Well, believe it or not, <laughs> it's SpongeBob related. Yes, yes, my beef is once again with the little yellow annoying bastard that lives under the sea in a goddamn pineapple and the network that continues to stroke his ever widening ego. Look, Nickelodeon, sit the hell down and let's talk for a moment here. SpongeBob sucks, okay? There, I'm just gonna come right out and say it, it sucks. You rode this train, you milked Betsy here for all she's worth, it is time to put it out the pasture for God's sake. It is time to throw this thing in the trash can where it belongs. Sure, okay, you rode its popularity for a while, but it is a dead horse at this point, stop beating it. And before somebody asks, yes, I'm well aware that the creator is gone. Does that mean my hatred for Spongebob ends? Hell no. I still hate Spongebob. I will always hate Spongebob. There will not be a day that goes by where I will not badmouth the little yellow bastard. I'm sorry. It won't happen. I hate Spongebob with a passion. A burning rage of passion. So, what exactly is it about Spongebob that pisses me off? Is it his annoying laugh? Is it the fact that he constantly annoys me just by being in the same room as me? Is it the fact... That no matter how hard I try to escape his ever-widening grasp on humanity's clutching grasp of realism and reality, that it bothers me? No, it's the fact that Nickelodeon just won't let the goddamn thing die. I'm sure you've heard of the spin-offs. I've bitched about them already. But there's at least three of them that I'm aware of. A musical with Squidward, at least the last that I heard of, that's still happening. You have Camp Coral, which, God help us all. And, of course, there's now a new one that's been brought to our attention. And this one, honestly, gets me a little more pissed off for the fact that now, Nickelodeon and the people in the powers that be are copying another premise from a more successful network that did it before them. And I mean, long before them. So before I ask this question, before I say what it is anyway, I should say, let me ask this question. Does anyone out there remember a little show called Space Ghost Coast to Coast? It starred the Hanna-Barbera cartoon character Space Ghost and his little talk show that he had with Brax, Zorak, and Moltor. Anybody remember that? Anybody at all? If you say yes, congratulations! You're going to know where I'm about to go with this. If you've seen the news, followed me on Twitter, or just heard it in general, you'll know that SpongeBob's best friend in the world, Patrick, the lovable doofus that, in the only joke of the show that I actually like, because I can actually relate to it since I have difficulty reading paper maps from time to time, when he goes west instead of east, mixing both west and east together, of course... Oh, technically he was just mispronouncing West, but still, who cares? Yes, Patrick is getting his own show. A talk show with him as the star. Now, let me stress this just one step further, if I may. So, Patrick is getting his own talk show. Okay? Space Ghost had his own. Uh, Phineas and Ferb kind of had their own little short thing on Disney. The Muppets had one. That was like a little short thing. Hell, Miss Piggy kind of had her own thing in the literal show, The Muppets. So, of course, yes, let's give Patrick Starr, the dumbest character on this show, let's give him the magical talk show. Okay, sure. And it's just another spinoff to add to the multiple milkies of Betsy here. Look, I will admit the mid part 
of Nickelodeon's heyday. Now, when Nickelodeon came out, it was good. I remember fondly the good old days of Nickelodeon back in the 90s. Clarissa Explains It All, Doug, Rugrats, Hey Arnold, Ah Real Monsters. In the 2000s, shit hit the fan. We got Rocket Power, which I will admit wasn't the world's greatest, but it was pretty interesting. And plus, X Game and improving yourself in extreme sports, that type of shit was popular at the time. Hell, I remember getting into skateboarding a little bit back when I was in 6th grade, and that was in the 2000s. So, yeah, what does that tell you? Besides the fact that I'm old as fucking dirt. Now, this is what bothers me about this, and I want to stress this point here if I may. So, what bugs me about this? The fact that the middle part of Nickelodeon, that was where their decline happened. So, why exactly did this happen? I'll give you a hint. It came out in 19... For 1990 freaking 9, and it was called SpongeBob Goddamn SquarePants. And ever since then, it has basically become the poisonous cancer that is ruining Nickelodeon. You thought their live-action teen-centric, or sorry, tween-centric drama shows were bad? No, some of those were actually pretty good. Victorious to a point, Zoe 101 was about my favorite. Some of the other ones can just rot in hell. Big Time Rush was pretty good, though. I did kind of get a kick out of that. But still, that those were nothing. Compared to SpongeBob, they're still in the frickin' nursery. No, no, no. SpongeBob is an abomination. And the fact that you continue to milk the living crap out of this show proves that you have no original bone in your body. Oh, here, let's milk this. Well, I don't think the creator liked that idea. Yeah, there's apparently records, video phone calls, recorded information. But here's the problem. As far as Nickelodeon and their semi-high-priced lawyers are concerned, they could easily piss-whip all that straight to hell. As far as they're concerned, all they gotta do is look at it and go, Well, there's nothing on paper legally binding us to not make sequels to this, so... Sequel, sequel, sequel. Oh, God. Not to mention the fact we're getting another Spongebob movie. But I kind of like some of the stipulations that Spongebob can never get, according to uh, one YouTuber that's been commenting a lot. By the way, thank you for this, because, you know, comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Or so uh, Madrybra keeps saying, anyway. But still, apparently Spongebob can never get his license. Plankton can never get the Krabby Patty secret formula, and we can never find out how in the hell Mr. Krabs port the whale. There, I said it, okay? Look, I'm sorry. All right, I I'm sorry. Let me get this through. Either Pearl's adopted, or Mr. Krabs got it on with the whale, okay? She is a goddamn whale. I mean that in the literal sense. He's a goddamn crab. She's a goddamn whale. So either she's adopted, and he just went to an, like, adopt her ass, or, and I want to stress the or part here, okay? Or, she, or, or, yeah, or her mother... You know, was porked by Mr. Krabs. Imagine that. Put that through your minds for a few moments and let that disturb the hell out of you. Then again, let SpongeBob marrying Sandy in that dream sequence that I found disturb you even more. No, this is honestly what I consider truly annoying as all hell. Look, I am not a fan of SpongeBob. I know the show. I have seen some of it. I wish I could say I didn't, but I have because I am a fan and a valued member of the phrase, know thy enemy. I know thy enemy. SpongeBob is annoying. It is a painful excuse for money-hungry corporation. Did you know there was a knockoff thing that apparently showed up on a Walmart site of Goku riding SpongeBob? Or Goku and Spongebob together. Some type of thing. And that pissed me off. But I hate Spongebob. The fact that it's getting sequels and spinoffs out the ass just pissed me off even more. Oh, it's going to be Camp Coral. Oh, who the f*** cares? Oh, it's going to be a musical with Squidward. I hate musicals! Oh, Patrick's getting his own talk show. Oh, for God's sake. Look. At some point, you have to realize, you gotta pull the plug on this. Come up with some goddamn originality here for everything's sake here. For God, come on. Look, 
You have the Loud House. You have the Casa Grandes. You have so many other ideas you could get up off the ground. Stop milking SpongeBob for all its goddamn worth. That cow is going to go dry at some point, and you're going to have to put Betsy out the pasture and turn her into hamburger, okay? And I, for one, am in the mood for some SpongeBob burgers, okay? Two fifty-two a pound. No hell, let's make this really cheap. I don't know how much meat goes for now. Let's go let's make it cheap. 95 cents a pound. Yeah! Cheap ass shit. No, no. This is officially now overkill, okay? You want to keep shoving SpongeBob down our throats. You're basically pulling what Cartoon Network did with goddamn Teen Titans Go crap. All right? You did this already, Nickelodeon. We've had this discussion. You have basically shoved Spongebob down our throats since the middle of 2000. I remember being home one summer, channel surfing in the afternoon, and seeing Spongebob marathons from 2 o'clock straight on to fucking 7 during the summer. Really? There's nothing else you could put on? Nothing at all. None of your other shows that you shove on a Saturday morning could go on here. What other programming did you have? I remember Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. Obviously, it must have pissed somebody off at DreamWorks. The Penguins in Madagascar was pretty good, but no! Those, that's just, that stuff takes money! We don't have it without Spongebob. No, you would have it without Spongebob because you would actually have something else that you wouldn't be putting a goddamn freaking gun to every time. Every new show that comes on the Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon basically holds a gun to it and say, you better be as good as Spongebob or you're canceled. Yeah, they got the canceled gun. And you want to know what it does? It sends their ass over to Nicktoons. Nicktoons. Nicktoons Network, where the good shows go to die. And, honestly, where some of the bad shows go that deserve to die. Looking at the possibility that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or sorry, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles finally did go over there, but I don't think it did. Yes, no, I hate the decisions that Nickelodeon's been making. I hate Spongebob. Look, when Nickelodeon got Power Rangers, I thought they were finally pulling their heads out of their ass. I'm like, yes, here we go. Finally, they're doing something right. When they got their hands on Digimon Fusions, I'm like, oh my god, they're finally doing... Yes! We're gonna get anime on Nickelodeon. Oh yes, now they're finally doing something right. Nope. Nope, they're not comfortable doing the right thing. No, 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 no! No, they can't do the right thing. Well, it's not bringing in the ratings. You canceled Fusions after three fucking episodes and shoved it over on the Nicktoons. You didn't even let it get three episodes in because you ended up interrupting it the one day because of Nickelodeon's worldwide day of goddamn play where you tell all the kids to go outside to like, what, three o'clock and play outdoors to get some fresh air and exercise. Then come back in, back to the brainwashing crap that is Spongebob. I know that the mid part of the 2000s was not a pleasant time for Nickelodeon. You had strange and unusual shows you took chances on that may not have completely panned out. Pelswick, As Told by Ginger, Cousin Skeeter, which I'll admit Cousin Skeeter was not good. Look, I I'm sorry, when Disney pulls a better show out of their ass that's basically the same concept in a way as Cousin Skeeter, with a puppet and a live person, and they're basically siblings. Oh, I'm sorry, they're doing a better job than you! Mr. Meaty was a good show, but you ended up pissing that one down the tubes. And yes, I thought that was a good show, okay? The theme song kicks fucking ass for 30 seconds. That theme song is like 30 seconds long, and it is the best theme song to any, any show I have ever heard. Any show that's like 30 minutes long, that is the best theme song I've heard. It is funny, it is hilarious. You could use that for a goddamn commercial for a restaurant. Seriously, I can literally make a barbecue joint, track down the person that wrote that song, ask him for the rights for it, buy the rights from him, and boom! I will have a successful business because that song gets stuck in your head. 
but somewhere between Pelswick, as told by Ginger, and all of the other weird shit we got in the mid-2000s when Nickelodeon was trying to find itself. Because, you know, it wasn't for kids anymore. No, you ditched Hey Arnold, Rugrats, Doug. Well, Doug went to Disney, but that's another story. You ditched all the stuff that made you good. And you shoved Spongebob down our damn throats. You got rid of Kablam. You got rid of all the good stuff. You shove Spongebob down our throats and we say enough. Then you bring us other shows. Well, here's As Told by Ginger. Here's Rocket Power. Here's Pelswick. Here's Cousin Skeeter. Then you start going to the tween-centric shows like iCarly. Zoe 101 was a good show, but iCarly was weird and unusual and uncomfortable to watch. I was uncomfortable. I was the fucking age group that you were aiming that show at, and I felt uncomfortable watching it. What does that tell you? But of course, back to SpongeBob, more SpongeBob, and now with 2020, yes, more SpongeBob. You know what? Why not? Let's just make 2020 the year of the sponge. Yo, know, I fucking what? Oh, why don't we just start? You know. Claiming that Spongebob's going to be the next ruler of the planet. Back the hell off of Disney's Mickey Mouse. No, no, no. Mickey's got nothing on Spongebob at this point. Hell no. He's, he's what, older? He's more experienced? More evil? He's got more powers in the dark side of the force? Yeah, Spongebob's got an annoying catchphrase. He works at a fucking fast food restaurant flinging meat all day long. His best friend is a goddamn lazy hippie starfish, and he pisses off his goddamn neighbor. Not to mention he works for a penny pinchy miser that's got a fucking whale for a daughter that's going to goddamn high school. All this on top of the fact that there is a literal one-eyed plankton creature that lives and works across the goddamn street from where he works at. You have the fact that he cannot get a goddamn boating license, which I do not understand the fucking physics of this show, because you're gonna have goddamn fucking fire underwater. And then the fact that there's somewhat, some type of a fucking thing going on with him and Sandy, and the fact that you have a dream thing where they get married in some sort of a play, and it still fucking creeps me the hell out that I saw that goddamn clip. And this is what you want to make spin-offs and sequels for. No, how about you bring back in a new form some of the old stuff? Rugrats just royally screwed to hell with all grown up. That was another bad decision in the mid-2000s. But at least come back with something decent. Give us a new season of Hey Arnold, for God's sake. You know, upgrade it a little bit. Arnold goes to goddamn high school. Bring Danny Phantom back. I'll take Danny Phantom. Hell, get us some of the better shit that you're sitting on because you don't want to get rid of the sponge. The sponge has got to go, okay? It and all of its little cretins have got to go. They are now unwanted guests in this house. I got. I feel like I gotta go get the Ronco knife set, make them a very, very thin-ass sandwich and go, that's all you're gonna eat for the rest of your time here at the house of, at the house of Nickelodeon. At Casa de Nickelodeon, that's all you're gonna get to eat anymore. It's a thin-ass sandwich with... Very thin ass bread. You can't even get it in a goddamn toaster. That's what you're gonna have. One slice of cheese and like two small little circles of meat. That's what you get as a fucking food dish anymore. That's all you get to eat anymore at Casa de Nickelodeon. Because we cannot afford to buy any food for you because we're basically banking on you to be this massive success story. You don't give any other shows a chance. You basically spoon feed SpongeBob down everybody's throat. Now, sequel after sequel after fucking goddamn spinoff. How many fucking movies? Was it, th was it? We're up to number three? Which you're screwing up because, like, oh, here, we're going to release it up in Canada. Then we'll release it in the U.S. Then we'll release it all the fuck over the place. And by that point, people are going to pirate this. Do you not understand how the internet works? Are you that out of touch with reality? You put something up on one part of the world. They will... Pirate the shit out of that. Put it up online for other people to see and download illegally, and then you're out a crap ton of cash. Are you out of your goddamn minds? 
Look, I know the Hey Arnold Jungle movie wasn't the big box office success you were hoping for to have on your channel. Okay, I get that. It wasn't a rating success story. But if you would have followed through with Rocco and Zim, you probably would have been seeing a crap ton of cash. Of course, nobody has fucking cable anymore. They all have gone to streaming sites. So what do you do? You screw over people. What's your goddamn website? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's literally nothing but your fucking TV listings. That's just what I want. We finally got rid of the Dan Schneider era, and here I thought maybe, just maybe, Nickelodeon might come out of the Dark Ages. It might beat this cancerous tumor that it has been having and holding on to since the goddamn 90s. For a fucking goddamn 20 years, it has been hovering with this thing, living with it every day, day in, day out. But no, no, you don't have the balls to get rid of the yellow, yellow bastard. No, you want to keep that goddamn thing and use that as a goddamn staple for any other show that comes along under your network. You don't give a flying rat's ass about 90% of the shows you actually have. You had Angry Beavers. You had Cat Dog. You actually had some goddamn originality back in the 90s and even into the early part of the mid 2000s but no no you shoved all that straight the hell in a handbasket because you don't want to get rid of the goddamn yellow bastard why it cannot be bringing you in that much money nobody can be bringing in that much cash to keep your goddamn asses afloat how many people can buy goddamn spongebob toilet paper how many fucking spongebob shirts can you sell not that goddamn many. I cannot believe that you're selling that many goddamn Spongebob shirts left and goddamn right. You cannot be making bank off of this bastard. Oh, but Spongebob has once a fucking Lego Spongebob sets? I don't care. I, I pity Lego in this deal. If it was, I threw, I'm pretty sure it was Lego, but I pity them in this deal. Whatever, I'm pretty sure it was Lego, but if it wasn't Lego, I pity whatever block company got involved in Nickelodeon's deal with, we're going to have Spongebob as a little place that you can build stuff together and all this other fun stuff you can do. Why? It, why? Look, I think at this point, if we stop watching Spongebob, it will go away. Please, I just want it to go away. Just let it die. All right? It's going to drag you with it. It is basically the Titanic, and you are the poor, poor survivors going down with the ship. All right? And I don't think you want to be like the musical band that kept playing the whole time the ship sinking to make everybody happy. Because it ain't fucking making me happy. I'm hearing the music. I know the ship's going down. I'm trying to make a beeline for sure. At this point, it's soon going to turn into the Poseidon Adventure. You're upside down underwater, and at this point, I already bought it on Deck 2. I bought it where Shelly Winters bought it in the Poseidon Adventure. I bought it on Deck 2, and you're still upside down 20,000 fathoms under the sea, I guess. I don't care. You're screwed either way. That's what's going to happen. God, I hate SpongeBob. Oh. <sighs> But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to the new Spongebob spinoff, or do you think that it's been too long and too many of them, and by now it's just time to say goodbye, Spongebob? It's been nice knowing you. Let me know in the comment section below, and until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been Andrew Rance.